Hi Drive Radio fans, your host John Rush. Richard Rush, my son, is behind the camera. And I apologize for my voice, I've got a little cold going on right now. We're going to review, the, this is the long version, of the 2015 Nissan, excuse me, Frontier. And this is, as you can see from the side back here, it's the Pro 4X, they call it. And, and the 4 throughout the truck, we'll see in a moment as we go through the interior and such, is painted yellow. Apologize for the wind also, but this is the, again, the 2015 Nissan Frontier. And this truck had a, they had a, did a facelift on this truck back in 2010, but I will be honest with you, it needs it needs to be redone. They've redone it for the for the rest of the world. They just haven't brought that truck to the U.S. yet, and I'm not sure why. So Nissan, if you can help me with that, I'd love to know why you haven't done that yet. But you know, what's this truck? Uh, you know, what's the value of this truck? Thirty-six thousand dollars is what this truck is as it sits right now. That's the crew cab version against the Pro 4X. It has leather interior, which we'll get into in a minute. Special wheels. You can see the racking up above, which actually comes with this particular model, which some people love or hate. That's kind of the comments I've gotten driving this truck. Some people really like it. Some people hate the look of it. Uh, it does have a nice channel system back here in the bed that we'll get to as Richard comes around the rest of the truck here. <clears throat> this this is a nice, pretty blue color. I will say that I do like that about this particular truck. And this truck is fully fully loaded at thirty six thousand bucks. So spray and bed liner. It's got the track system. And as you can see, we were using some stuff the other day. It's easy to bungee stuff in real quick. You, you, these things adjust. Let me show you that real quick. Next, you can just turn these out and slide these back and forth wherever you want them. Tighten them back up, which makes that kind of nice. So it's got a nice track system that way. As far as you know, tying things down into the truck itself is concerned. This particular truck, we'll get to it as we go for a drive in here in just a minute. It does have locking rear differential, high range, low range. So it's more of an off-road type truck that this particular vehicle is competing with the, you know, the, the Toyota version. And, you know, some of the things that I've read on this truck, and I would tend to agree, is when you look at what Chevrolet GMC has done to upgrade their mid-sized trucks, this truck is looking old it needs to have some updates so not knocking the truck as far as its, its functionality how it works and all of that but looks wise yes it needs to come into the modern area the, the, this really this truck hasn't really been updated for a good solid 10 years that's how long they've been running on this platform it's a good strong platform and it works well but i think it needs some updating let's tell you what let's go for a drive we'll come back we'll go through the interior and i'll show you and i'll give you at the end kind of my uh, my opinion of the 2015 nissan frontier all right, folks, now we're on the driving portion of the 2015 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. So we're going to do the backup camera, show you how that works. So we're putting it in reverse. You can see this does not, when you turn the wheel, show you where you're going. It just It's just basically a, a basic camera, and I'm trying to stay in the shade where you can see that a little better. One thing that we that my son actually mentioned, and I think he's right, one thing about this, this uh, unit that's a little bit more cumbersome is when you look at the presets, with it being a smaller screen, and it's it's nice to have the screen and it's a touch screen, but it's small enough that if you're going down the road trying to run the presets, it gets a little bit difficult because as you can see, they're they're somewhat small and you've got to be, you know, you've got to place your finger just exactly there. And as you're driving down the road, that can be a little bit cumbersome to try to, you know, to try to see. I, I wish this was a little larger. So Nissan, again, if you're listening, it does have dual climate control, which is a nice feature. Here's all the rest of your buttons down below. Heated and cooled, or not cooled, heated seats, high and low, two, four, Two, I should say, two high, four high, four low. As far as your your controls here go, locking diff is over here on the right. Uh, outside of that, it's a pretty it's pretty basic. It does have some nice. I, again, I talk about this in the interior portion. I'll go over it a little bit further. But the cup holders, some things in here that I really like. But I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, steering wheel, you know, pretty standard as far as the controls go. Nothing fancy here. You do have the ability to do your volume, your phone, control your phone, all of that. Wipers are over here, and of course, turn signals on the left. Tell you what, let's take a quick drive, and there is a hill descent control on this truck also that I, I don't think I've mentioned yet. It's a quiet truck to drive, I will say that, even with some of the plastic interior features, it is a quiet truck to drive. This is the 4 liter engine in this particular truck, it does run well. Um, horsepower, there's two different horsepower ratings on this, depending upon the model and how you do it. You'll just have to go to the website and check that out to determine exactly which truck you want and what horsepower ratings are going to be. But, you know, it's a comfortable truck to drive. I mean, after having it for a week, you know, it's not something I wouldn't buy and it's not something that I wouldn't enjoy driving. Uh, but for me personally, I think there's some other units on the market that actually do a better job of what Nissan's doing here, just in a more modern way. As I said earlier, this truck hasn't been updated for several years and, uh, and it's showing its age. Now, Again, is that going to keep somebody from buying it? You know, it's hard to say. It may, it may not. You're going to have to be the judge of that. So go out to the Nissan dealer yourself, check it out, and see what you think. But I'll tell you what, we'll go back. We'll check out the interior. I'll give you my opinion of the 2015 
Nissan Frontier. All right, folks, hope you, hope you enjoyed the driving portion of the review. And again, I apologize for my cold. Starting from the back, we're going to show you how the tailgate drops. And again, some things that other trucks in the market have that this truck doesn't have. There's no easy opening tailgate. So if I, if I don't hold this up, it just slams down. A lot of the other new trucks, it'll actually just kind of glide down. We showed you a minute ago the, the spray and bed liner when I did the opener. And, and a comment that even my son made is, okay, we got spray and bed liner here, but then we go to a plastic piece here. It's almost like, I don't know why we didn't just do a metal plate spray and bed liner on top of this. And it just does have the nice track system. You can take these out. Again, these can be moved down to the bottom where you can do, do some more uh, you know, cargo holding, tie downs if you would. These, of course, can be moved anywhere you want inside of the rails. Uh, so the, 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 this part, yeah, this part I really like. That's pretty, you know, pretty cool feature. Although, again, yeah, I'm not trying to knock things, but I don't know how much you're going to be hauling in the back of this truck. We're having that's a big issue. If you had a big, you know, three quarter ton truck and you're hauling a ton of stuff in the bed, this might be coming handier. This truck's not even long enough. You'd have to have the tailgate down to even put a motorcycle or something in to even tie that in. So I don't want to say they're useless, but on this short bed of a truck. Um, on a longer bed truck, I think those would actually be more functional. But I tell you what, let's come around the side. I'll walk you through the interior. We'll jump in the back seat here. <clears throat> Move the snow scraper out of it. And this seat, as we always do, is all the way back right now. So as I jump in, my knees do hit. I'm 5'10", my knees hit. But this is all the way back. There's there's plenty of room in the front. So this, this seat could go forward another... Really, you could go forward four or five inches and give this person a little more room. But as you can see, it's not you know it's not as deep as a, of a cab. Again, this is a mid-sized truck. This is not considered a full-size truck, so you're not going to have the room inside of it you typically would. It does have a nice center fold-down console. No cup holders in it all, but it does fold down. So if you're sitting in here, you've got something to lean on. No power ports or anything back here. It's pretty plain when you look back here. You know, it's, it does have a leather seating, but it's pretty plasticky as far as the rest of it goes. Climbing out again, not a not a big deal. Got good headroom, which I do like. I'm going to open the front door, jump around to the other side, and I'll show you the driver's portion of it. Richard can kind of show you some of the, the sides here real quick while we're looking again. And Richard, if you would, show them the sides and, and kind of the, again, some of the plasticky feel. That was the only knock that I had is there's, there's just not a lot of soft touch. Here, here is a little bit softer, a little bit here accented, but everything else is pretty much a hard plastic, which maybe that's okay for you. All right, as I come around to the front and jump in the driver's seat here, one thing I do like about this truck is the cup holders are very, very functional. These actually, they've got inserts where these can actually come in and out. And I've got a really big water bottle that I typically carry around. The nice thing about that is with this out, my big water bottle actually sits all down in here nice and neat. So that part, you know, actually very functional cup holders. I know that's kind of a most people would say, geez, John, who cares? Move on. Well, you know, some people, cup holders are a big deal. The seats are comfortable. I will give them that. They've got lumbar support that you can adjust on the side of the seat right here. This seat adjusts. So does the driver's seat. And uh, one of the things that they've added, we didn't get much, much into this in the driving portion, is the infotainment system. It's got the Nissan Connect, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, you can read more about that on their website. I won't get into all the details of that because you really need to go check that out for yourself also. You know, not a lot of storage capacity in the center console. This is pretty small. Glove box, very, very small, so there's not a lot of room there. There's there's a little bit of an upper one here, but again, you can see, not super big. You're going to get some gloves, maybe a flashlight in there, but it's pretty tight. It does have some door pockets on the side, which Richard was showing you a minute ago. Uh, this particular model does come with the sunroof up on top, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of open up the cab, if you would. Uh, but again, uh, you know, 2015 Nissan Frontier. Uh, when you look at the insides of this, um, you know what I want to say. It's uh, it needs updated. I guess that's probably the biggest thing that I want to say. So Nissan, not knocking it. I think it's still a good value for the money and for the off-road capability. And I actually talked to somebody on the radio show last weekend about this. As far as the truck goes, if you're a really hardcore Nissan fan, does this truck fit the bill? Absolutely. But are there other trucks on the market that that also do? Yeah. And I think that's where Nissan needs to up their game on this particular truck. So tell you what. Let's do this. I'll give you my I'll give you my total opinion of the Nissan Frontier here in just a second, so don't go away. All right, folks, my opinion of the 2015 Nissan Frontier. And Frontier in general, this is the Pro 4X model, which if I was going to buy it, I would buy this model just because of some of the cool features that it's got. Locking differential, uh, some of the off-road capabilities to it, the racking system and so on I did like. Uh, pros. Uh, that, I think it's a decent value at 36 grand for the truck that you get here, so you're well under 40. You still get locking diff. Uh, a lot of off-road capabilities, nicer wheel and tire package, uh, the, the rails in the back, the spray and bed liner, the leather, leather seating. So that part I do like. The downsides of this truck, 
mileage is atrocious. Uh, we're averaging around 17 miles to the gallon in town, and, and again, I think that could actually be better. I also don't like the plasticky feel. One of the things about Frontier that I haven't liked over the years is all the plastic that you feel like you're sitting inside of. And again, some of you, that may not be a big deal. In fact, for some people, if you're doing a lot of off-roading, you know, being able to wipe that down, wash it off, that might actually be a good thing. Me, personally, I like some of the softer touches. It makes the truck quieter inside. I will say this truck drives and rides very, very well. That part of it I enjoy. I just think Nissan needs to take what they've done on the European and the worldwide market, which they've redone this truck there, and bring that over here to America. So you know what? You may be somebody that wants to wait for that. On the same token, this may be a very good truck for you. What we always suggest is get out, drive these trucks, compare them, use them the way that you would normally use them, and then make the determination of whether or not you want to buy it. And if you do go to the Nissan dealer, please tell them that John and Richard Rush from Drive Radio sent you. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this review today that we've done for you. And uh, as my son always says, check out all the rest of the reviews that we have. Please make sure you go out and drive whatever car it is you're looking at yourself. Uh, don't, re don't go off of any review that you watch, either ours or somebody else's or what you read. You need to go out and experience the car for yourself. But remember, we're on air, Drive Radio, every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's here in the Denver, Colorado market. You can catch us on the TuneIn app at 560thesource.com. Just look, actually, just look for 560 here in the Denver market. You can also watch us live on YouTube. We stream our broadcasts every Saturday on our YouTube channel, Drive Radio, all one word. You can also find us on our website at Drive dash radio.com and you can listen to us live right on our radio station's website which is 560thesource.com with that we're out of here hope you have a great time and thanks again for watching <laughs>